Welcome. My name is Van Richards. I'm a chartered financial consultant. And today we are talking about Magna International. It's a really interesting stock. And this is one of the stocks that you all, the listeners, ask me to review. And I'll remind you that if you're listening to this and there's a particular stock that you have in mind, put it into the comments, even if you're listening to this on a replay. And if it's a stock that I think that I can do some worth for you to help you to understand it just a little bit better, I'll take the time and I'll do the research and I'll review it and then I'll get back to you and report. And so all of us can benefit from this. So let's get started today with the daily stock analysis. Okay, Magna International. You may not be familiar with Magna International because it's not a household name, but it's something that I think that by the time today is over, you're going to have a little bit better understanding about what they do. Now, I want to remind you that I, you know, what I'm doing right here today is I'm trying to help you all understand how stocks are working. What I'd normally do in the mornings, I work as a financial planner with clients and I help them to put together retirement plans so that they don't run out of money when they retire. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, go over to my website at richardsfinancialplanning.com. You can learn a little bit more about it. But let's get started really and talk more about Magna International. I think this video is going to tell you more about what this company does so that if you're interested in it, you'll know that this is the kind of stock you want to buy or this is the kind of stock you want to avoid. Just depends. So let's take a look at this together. All right, Magda International, $15.2 billion. Now, you know, the whole market was down today. The The, the NASDAQ was off almost 2.5%. We saw Twitter get pummeled today, close to 20%. So we saw a lot of stocks down. We actually saw a few different stocks that were up. Um, if you look at Alphabet, it was up. But let's look at this stock today, Magda, MGA. It was only off about half a percent. Not too bad, really, but let's take a look and see what its future could be. And I hope that you'll stick with me today and watch this video through because we're going to approach this a little bit differently than we normally do. I want to try to help you so that you can remember the techniques and the strategies that I teach you so that you can use this whenever you're analyzing any particular stock. Now, I go into a lot more detail here, but I think if you use my concepts, you're really going to benefit in the long run. Now, the whole idea is, remember this, SEC. Remember that, SEC. This is the way that we're going to break these stocks down. We want to look and see if they're stable, number one. Number two, we want to look at if they can earn. And then number three, we want to see if they can compete. Now, really, this is a, this is a formula for just about any business that you would have that's out there. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be a publicly traded company or whether it's going to be a small company. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be a relationship. If you're a guy and you're looking to get married or you're a girl and you're looking to get married, and let's say that if you're a girl or a guy, you're looking for somebody that's going to be stable, they can earn and they can compete. Just the same with a company. If you're looking for if you're looking for an employer, you want to make sure that they are stable, they make earnings, and they can compete. So let's take a look at how that's actually applied today to the company that we're talking about. Now, the first thing that we want to look at is we want to look at the stability of this company. How stable is it? Um, when you look at what they do, they, one of the big things that they do is they make parts, big parts for the big three automakers in Detroit. That's about 40% of their business. And we'll talk more about the specifics of that in a minute. But if you were listening to the news in the past week or so, you heard that GM's new introduction of the electric Hummer is going to be its inroads to compete with Tesla. Um, it's going to take a while for it to catch up. But the point is going to be that if they're going to be more into the operation of creating electric vehicles, then they may not need the type of 
parts that Magna International and other companies are supplying to them. And if you actually look at the comments that were written in this particular article that was in Barron's, it mentioned specifically some of the companies that we're talking about today. When we talk about the competitors in a few moments, we're going to talk about American Axel and Ber Borg Warner, how they compete with Magna International. But Magna International is, uh, they're actually singled out out here. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you're thinking about the stability of a company is you want to think of how they are, where are they making their profits? Now, the graph that you see, or actually the chart that you see that's in front of you is all of the different acquisitions that this company that Magna International has had in recent history, actually back to about uh, 2010. Now, if you ever, have you ever watched uh, Gordon Ramsay's show that's called Kitchen Nightmares. If you have, this is what he does sometimes. He'll go into a restaurant and he'll get a menu and he'll order off of that menu. Honestly, this does have something to do with what we're talking about in investments, but bear with me for just a minute. He goes into the restaurant, he gets the menu and he looks at it. And if he's looking at the menu and the menu has 25 different Italian items, 16 different Chinese items, a hundred different beverages. He'll look at it and just go, there's no way that you can make any money from this business because you have too many items on the menu. That is actually one of the problems that faces Magnet International, not from a food perspective. Don't get me wrong. Stick with me here for just a minute. The problem is that they are too diversified. They have too many different operations. Let me make this chart just a little bit bigger for you so you can see where they're spread out. They have operations in China, Italy, Germany, England, Canada, Brazil, all over the world, uh, the United States, it's not listed here, but it is. There are operations everywhere and it's only a $15 billion company. Now I say only, but when you think about the size of a company like Tesla, Tesla, you know, uh, which is hundreds of billions. And then you compare it also with some of the big automakers, it's small and they're diversified and they're spread out all over the place. So that's really a big challenge. Now, if you read, there was actually a recent Barron's article, which was touting that electric vehicles were going to be a big thing for Magna International because they can actually make a complete vehicle. And there are Chinese auto manufacturers that come to Magna International to have them make their vehicles completely, actually, and then they sell them in China. The problem is that's only about 17% of the total operations of the company. When we look at from the standpoint of going forward, how they're actually going to be able to compete, it, it's very difficult. Now, bear with me. There is opportunity to make money in this stock. It's just how you're going to make it is going to be the key. And I'm going to help you to learn that. So stick with me if you could. We want to talk about the moat just a little bit because the moat is going to be when we're talking about the stability of the company. We're still in the stability. Remember the stability, the earnings, and the competitiveness. When we're talking about the moat, the moat's the imaginary barrier between the company and their competition. And there's not really a lot. There's not enough switching costs for actually to have a moat or to have a barrier that's out there. And when you have a moat, a lot of times it's created with intellectual property. Magna International does have some patents, but one of the problems with the way that this company operates is, and if anyone from Magna International watches this video, you could improve your public image if you would actually publicize what the patents are that you have. And then people could discern whether it's actually a value and how much the value is. Another thing is we look at the actual earnings history. And we're going to look at a graph in a few moments. And some of you may who follow this stock or have followed this stock probably see that the prices have increased significantly since all the way up until uh, October the 22nd, I believe it was. And we've had some fall off since that point in time. But cost in production is not really that big of a thing. They're not making a lot of profits. Actually, if you go back and you look from 2004, six out of the years from 2004, they've had less than 2% profit. And in three of those years, they actually had negative profits. Over the past 15 years, the company's only had an average of a 2.2% average economic profit. 
Now, if we look at earnings, though, the earnings per share, I, I know I'm, it sounds like I'm beating them up and I, I am just a little bit, but I want you to understand where the cautionary tales are in this stock. There is money to be made, but it may not be over the long term from growth. It may be more from dividends. There may be some growth that's available in the stock, but it's going to be more short lived. Um, if we look at the earnings, yeah, the earnings, we follow the dancing cursor down here. It took a fall off at the beginning of the coronavirus market crash, but they're actually predicting that earnings are going to go back and compete more, get back to where they were. And they've been pretty close to, you know, making their expectations. Now, here's the good news on Magna International. And there is some good news. And this is what the analysts are actually saying. They're saying that even though that they are spread throughout the world and the strategy of this stock has been to find companies where they can basically go in and integrate what they do into their system. For example, the most recent acquisition that they had that was in China was with a company that make car seats. And uh, the operation is already an ongoing business. And if they can integrate that in and make it cost worthy, then it's gonna benefit the whole company reproducing uh, the facets of the company from scratch are really, really difficult to do. So that's a big advantage. They have regular revenues from contracts. Yes, they do have contracts with the big three automakers, which makes a big portion of their profits. Um, the other thing is, they're a very large vendor when it comes to actually making car parts. Now, they're not like an O'Reilly car parts. They're not like the car part company that's down on the corner where you can go make buy car parts for your car. They are going to make parts for manufacturers. It's a little bit different from that point. Um, now, what the bears are saying on this particular stock is this. Now, I've talked about it a little bit, but I'll emphasize this. 40% of the company's revenue, 40% of Magna International's revenue is actually coming from the big three automakers. If those automakers shift more to electric cars in the future, it could interrupt with things that are going on and it could interrupt with the business operations for Magna significantly. Um, the other thing is the car business is a cyclical business. Um, there are years which it will be good. You'll have years like now, which it's actually not as good as it has been. And it can turn negative very quickly. The auto parts supply business is very competitive. Raw materials, even in electric cars, like the cost of nickel or the cost of any of the operations is quite volatile from time to time. New electric cars, especially from the big three automakers, could interrupt with everything that's going to go on. Now, let's take a look more specifically at what some of the analysts are saying. The closing price on the stock today was 5111 The fair market value that Morningstar is picking on this is going to be $63. Now, this is where the short-term money may be made in this particular stock. You may buy it and you may be selling it within a year, or I usually try to pick three to five years, but it may be a little bit shorter depending on how things work out. The stock itself is selling for about an 18% discount and Morningstar is pegging it at four stars. Remember the star system for stocks is different than the star system is for the mutual funds. Mutual funds is a lot different. Okay. What the average analysts are, there's not a big number of analysts that are following this particular stock, but out of 10 analysts that are following it, six of them are saying that it's a strong buy. Nobody's got to sell on it. Three of them say that it's going to be a hold. So they're actually saying that Magna International is a strong buy. If we look a little bit more specifically at what some of the different wirehouses are doing right now, the, the low number comes from Morgan Stanley, and they're saying the price is going to be $33 to $36. But note also, so that this price is all the way back from June. A more recent price, which is higher, it's coming from JP Morgan Chase Company. They're pegging it in between $60 and $69. And yes, this is actually where the money could be made. If you're buying in on this stock and it's at $51, we're looking at a price between $60 and $69. Now, for the long-term investors, if you're saying, okay, I want to get in on this stock if it gets around $50 a share or 51 where it's at right now, what if it goes down further? Well, 
they've been pretty steady about paying a dividend. The dividend has varied a little bit over the years, but they've been pretty consistent at paying a dividend, even though that they haven't had a lot of growth. And you're going to see a graph about the growth here in just a moment. Um, when we look at, uh, I'm going to give you a longer term graph, but this is more of a short term graph. Remember, we're, we're keeping the SEC in mind, the stable, the earnings and the competitiveness. Now we want to see we've gotten to the part about the competitiveness. We're comparing it right now. I'm comparing it to the S&P 500. And over the past, let's say, few weeks from September, past couple of months, the high in the S&P was around 3580. Today, it ended at 3269. I think we probably got a little bit more downside to the S&P. We're off about 8.68%. I think going around 10% or even more could be possible. So hang on to your hat coming up to the election. If we're looking at MGA right now, the high point led up to October the 22nd. And that was actually when they named a new CEO of the company. So perhaps there's some optimism in there. Then the market started to turn sour at that point in time. And that's where it leaves us today at 51.11. And that's off about 8.45%. Now, here's where some of the short-term money is possibly going to be made in this. But hold on just a second before I get to that. I, I overlooked this part. This is going to be a five-year graph because I want you to understand that if you're thinking, I want to buy this stock and I'm just going to hold on to it no matter what. Over this five years, the stock really hasn't made a huge amount of money. Five years ago in 2015, it was selling for $45.09. It's only increased about 5% in five years. That's about a percent a year. That's not a huge amount when you compare it to other money that's out there. That's why I'm saying that for you all that think, okay, if I could buy this at 51 and sell it at 60, I could turn around and make close to 20% really quick. So. If that's in your view, then more power to you. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if we look at some of the fair market values that are being estimated by some of the wirehouses, the brokerage houses, that's what they're looking at. Another way that people are looking at making money off of this is off of the puts and the, the uh, calls. And we'll talk about that actually in a little bit that in just a moment. How does it compete with other companies that are similar to it? And actually, they, they as far as car parts manufacturers go, they're really at the top of the heap. Uh, Magna competes with American Axle and Borg Warner, which are probably the biggest competitors. And they're actually, I don't have the actual numbers in here. This is only a year, uh, actually three years that's thrown up here. But you can see that they're when the market's down, they're down. So the point is that they hang with their competitors pretty well. The one thing that they do have going really strong in their favor is they pay a very strong dividend of 3.12%. Now that does vary from time to time, but, and it's not guaranteed obviously, but that's one of the things, if you hang on to this stock and you think, okay, I want to buy this and see if I can go from 51 to 60. Um, and if that doesn't happen, well, you're getting a dividend too, and you have to determine how it's going to fit into your portfolio as you go forward from that standpoint. But remember, with all of this stuff, I'm really talking more short term, which I don't do as much in these videos, but um, the past performance is not going to be a guarantee of what the future results is going to possibly be. All right. Now, take a look at this chart a little bit more carefully than anything else that we've looked at today, especially if you're thinking of making short-term profits on this. And I usually don't encourage people to do this because I really try to help people with retirement accounts over the long term. But some of you have asked me about making money off of this in the shorter term. And rather than trying to do day trading or swing trading, some people will actually be buying the calls and the puts. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the way that this works, these are called options. Just a little bit of brief education for you. When you buy a call, what you're doing is you're buying a contract to buy that particular stock. And if you follow the graph that's in front of you, you see the circles going around and around, follow the cursor that's right here. The price beside it is called the strike price. The strike price on this for this particular contract on November 20th, that's when it expires, is $55. So what's happening is that people are buying a contract 
to buy this stock, a call to buy this stock at $55. So they're looking and hoping that it does go up to 60 or so, which was what some of the wirehouses are predicting on this particular stock. You actually see that there's a large number of contracts out there. There's about 1,373 open interest contracts right now. And they're paying 55 cents a contract on that. So that if it goes closer and it gets higher, the closer we get to that date of November 20th, that 55 cent price is going to go up. And as it goes up, they may sell that contract or they may actually wait and they may exercise the contract. If the contract expires, then it's basically going to be worthless. On the other side of the coin, if we look at the puts, remember the puts are going to be the opportunities to sell. So you're buying a contract to sell this stock. Some people may be doing what they call insuring their, their long purchase. Remember to buy something long is you're going to actually own the stock and think of it this way, you're long term. So you're buying it long. They're buying it with the anticipation that the stock, if it goes down, they could sell it at $55 and they're insuring their investment so that they won't lose as much. So if the markets goes to Hades in the handbasket, then you're going to see that a stock like this could possibly be uh, have some protection at 55. All right. So that gives you a little bit more information on how all this is working. I'm running a little bit long today. I wanted to give you more information on the options that are available on this stock. And normally I don't do that. I'm more of a long-term investor when I talk to clients about planning for retirement, but this is for you all, the listeners here. Some of you have asked about how this works. So I wanted to take a little bit of time and do that. And there are a lot of you that are asking for information on stocks. I am glad to, to help you. I can't get to everybody um, with several hundred listeners here on on YouTube and you know I've got a couple thousand over on Facebook and then a couple thousand over on LinkedIn. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with the request, but I'm really I, I like doing this for you. If you have a request, put it into the platform and um, I'll, I'll look through them, ask your questions. I'll see what I can do about helping you out. All right. So everybody have a really safe weekend. Have a good Halloween. Have a happy Halloween. And if you haven't voted, go vote next week. Keep in mind that if you're a capitalist, you know who to vote for. Have a great weekend, everybody.